from the library of the New York Stock Exchange at the corner of Wall and Broad Streets in New York City, you're Inside the Ice House, our podcast from Intercontinental Exchange on markets, leadership, and vision in global business. The dream drivers that have made the NYSE an indispensable institution for global growth for more than 225 years. Each week, we feature stories of those who hatch plans, create jobs, and harness the engine of capitalism right here, right now, at the NYSE and at ICE's 12 exchanges and seven clearinghouses around the world. Now here's your host, Josh King, Head of Communications at Intercontinental Exchange. Intercontinental Exchange, the parent company of the NYSE, is hosting an event focused on bringing transparency to the crypto markets. Fair to say that no topic in recent months has been bigger in the financial discussion than cryptocurrencies and the underlying principles that govern them. It was all the talk at FIA Boca where we originated several shows back in March. And over the past year, we've seen a steep run-ups in the price of cryptocurrencies, often followed by precipitous falls. In spite of this extreme volatility, the market continues to grow, and some estimate it could reach a valuation as high as $1 trillion in 2018, making it one of the highest valued assets in the marketplace. But that valuation is only the tip of the iceberg if crypto can gain acceptance by the professional or institutional marketplace. My guest today, Adam Back, co-founder and CEO of Blockstream, a leader in blockchain technologies and financial cryptography. In March, Intercontinental Exchange and Blockstream launched a new service called the Cryptocurrency Data Feed, which captures 65% of crypto trading volume and delivers it through ICE's real-time feeds that are designed specifically for professional traders and investors. After he leaves us here in the library, Adam will sit down with ICE Data Services President and COO Lynn Martin for a fireside chat on the new data solutions available and provide their perspectives on the challenges and opportunities for the industry. Our conversation with Adam Back right after this. Inside the Ice House was brought to you this week by Norwegian Cruise Line, NYSC listed, NCLH. Norwegian Cruise Line's 16th ship, Norwegian Bliss, will begin cruising Alaska and the Caribbean seasonally in June 2018. For more information, visit www.ncl.com. Dr. Adam Back is the co-founder and CEO of Blockstream and the inventor of Hashcash. Hashcash is the proof-of-work algorithm used in Bitcoin mining. Adam has had an extensive career in cryptography, privacy, and security, with a focus on distributed systems, including the Internet and Bitcoin. He's held leadership roles at technology companies such as EMC, Microsoft, Nokia, VMware, and holds a Ph.D. in computer science from the University of Exeter. It's our pleasure to welcome Adam back inside the Ice House. Welcome, sir. Hi, thanks for having me. So is it odd that, as some people would describe you, a cyberpunk would, like yourself, would end up as the keynote speaker at an event at the New York Stock Exchange? Um, Well, I mean, I've had a career which has been uh, relating to bringing cryptography to industry um, with startups and with larger companies, but usually with an interest in privacy or electronic payments. Uh, cryptography, encryption, and and that technology has a kind of intersection between um, providing commercial value, commercial confidentiality, and also providing uh, value to end users for privacy. And, you know, I think uh, we take the internet for granted these days, but in the early days of the internet, there was, you know, uh, a tension between uh, the democratization and direct access to publishing, for example, with blogs and so on. So um, seeing cryptocurrency uh, available in the market is, I think, another one of those kinds of events. So we'll, we'll see how it plays out. In many ways, it's early days for the technology. How did your career progress? What were the first jobs you were asked to do and, and the things that you learned along the way to this point? Um, yeah, so... I uh, joined a startup called Zero Knowledge Systems in the late 90s, and uh, that startup was interested in providing privacy technology and encryption, and uh, they were actually a licensee of a previous generation electronic cash system. And um, that was how I ended up uh, working for Nokia as well as a 
advisor or consultant through Zero Knowledge Systems. Uh, they were exploring electronic cache protocols for mobile phones. Um, so, and I'd also implemented uh, the brand's electronic cache system as an open source library. So I had spent quite a lot of time being interested in applied cryptography and advancing the state of the art of electronic cache through the years. Why did you decide to launch Blockstream? Um, well, it seemed that there was, you know, uh, not that much commercial support for protocol development in cryptocurrency. So pretty much all of the work at the time, so this was uh, late 2013, we got our funding in 2014. Um, Who funded you? Uh, so a number of, uh, so the lead investor was uh, Reid Hoffman, and uh, we also had some money from Coastal Adventures and a number of other investors. And that was the seed round, and in the A round, the lead investor is Horizons, which is Li Kai Xing's company. And uh, and we were talking before we went on the air about Blockstream is sort of virtual, the way you've, where you've put people. Uh, no, the headquarters is a Canadian incorporation, and then we have a subsidiary in the US. Um, we have some offices in Canada, offices in the Bay Area, and we have a subsidiary in Malta through the acquisition of the Green Dress wallet. And yeah, it's a distributed company. We, we need to acquire the uh, talents and expertise of um, experienced developers in Bitcoin technology. And so uh, we end up picking them up wherever they are. And people are, you know, maybe not at a point in a time where they want to relocate to the Bay Area, for example. And you make your home very happily in Malta. I do, yes. Uh, a lot of travel involved, of course, because of the offices in different locations and conferences and business meetings. But the Maltese government has proven itself very hospitable to Blockstream investment and, and technologies. Yeah, they've uh, recently had quite a bit of discussion about um, making cryptocurrency company-friendly reg financial regulations. And so there have been, uh, in the news in the last month, a couple of Bitcoin exchanges considering looking to Malta, the rock... Uh, exchange has been in Malta for many years, actually. So you launch Blockstream in 2013. What have been the biggest shifts in the cryptocurrency space since you launched? I mean, actually, the um, pace of interest has been much faster than we anticipated. So um, people talk about internet time, and it seems that Bitcoin or blockchain time is faster. So, you know... Um, Back in 2014, where we got our funding, we were thinking it would be quite some years before banks would be interested in the technology. And that obviously evolved very quickly. Um, the scale and scope of mining also was phenomenal. And, you know, in it's uh, at, at this point, most banks have some personnel who are looking at blockchain and trying out different things. So that was not at all uh, certain, and the pace was much faster than expected. Um, since when we when we started. And the regulations were also less clear at that time. So I think the regulatory basis is much clearer at this point. I mentioned at the beginning of our conversation that you are credited as being the inventor of Hashcash. And this attracted, in 2008, the interest of Satoshi Nokomoto. Uh, first, for the doubters, can you confirm that Satoshi really exists? Um, I've, I've never met the person. I, it didn't occur to me when I received the email that this was a pseudonym. I assumed it was somebody's real name. From time to time, I did receive email from academics or applied researchers. So I thought it was another one of these kind of people. Um, yeah, so I mean, Bitcoin went on to use Hashcash for far more intensive work. I mean, the kind of work for email was calculated to be, you know, about half a minute or a minute's work for a laptop or desktop to not be annoying to the sender, but to be cumulatively expensive to somebody who wanted to send millions of email, where Bitcoin does work, which is uh, trillions of times more intensive than that across thousands of computers around the world. So what was Satoshi actually looking for when he contacted you? Um, so I think he'd, at that point, he'd already written uh, the paper and presumably the implementation that that was released in January 2009. And... Yeah, he was just uh, looking to refer to the paper, and I referred him to another paper called B Money, which uh, he went on to cite in the paper. Had you thought at that point about the financial aspect of hash cash before this, or were you mostly thinking of its computation capital potential? Um, so, actually, I mean, the hash cash system, I, I posted it with source code and later released a paper. So, the original 
release was in 1997, so it's quite a while before. And people were intrigued and thinking, sort of looking around for ways to make it into respendable money. And so by 98, which so about a year later, um, Nick Sabo, who's, who's quite well known in cryptocurrency circles as the inventor of smart contracts, had proposed a system called BitGold, and Wei Dai had proposed a similar system called B-Money. And they were sort of designs, but they weren't implemented or realized. And so they, they you know, in terms of their proposed functionality, it was quite similar to Bitcoin, but there were gaps in the design that I guess Satoshi figured out later. What did you think of it when it first came out? Um, I mean, I thought it was pretty interesting that somebody had uh, solved the remaining problem, like sort of technical problem. So um, the the problem that many of us had had when we tried to figure out how to do this kind of thing in the late 90s was how to control inflation of the coins. Um, because if, if you can do work to create coins, you can just do more work and create more coins. And if they're valuable, you'd get kind of runaway inflation. And... So, you know, the, the uh, solutions for that that Nick Zabo had proposed and so on relied on traders and markets and art, outside you know, human influence, whereas Satoshi had managed to find a way for computers to automate that, which is he just fixed the rate of supply and let the market determine the price. So that was, I, to my mind, one of the uh, key insights. The last six months, we've seen extraordinary fluctuations up to and above $20,000 per Bitcoin and now somewhere around to the high 6,000s. Has this gyration surprised you? Where do you see it going? I mean, it's it's uh, been volatile for a number of years now. Um, and so I, I presume we'll see more volatility. Things seem to be picking up a bit. I think we've touched 9,000 a couple of times in the last week. Um, the various theories, you know, the market puts puts theories on the price afterwards. Uh, one of them being tax season. selling for tax season, yeah, in Japan and the US particularly. And now that's over. It seems to have supported the price gains they've seen in the last week or so. The introduction of futures contracts affecting it and all the way you see it. Um, it's. Uh, I mean, it's it's an interesting product because it it gives access to different players and some of the. Retail service providers have resold the futures, so it's another form factor for people who uh, don't want to do the IT management to manage Bitcoins directly. After the break, we talk to Adam back about the partnership that Blockstream now has with Intercontinental Exchange. Norwegian Cruise Lines Norwegian Bliss will feature the largest racetrack at sea, incredible entertainment including the Tony Award winning musical Jersey Boys, as well as two 180 degree observation lounges perfect for whale watching in Alaska or taking in sunsets in the Caribbean. To learn more, visit www.ncl.com. Back now with Adam Back. You are now, after the career that we've talked about, Adam, the CEO of Blockstream, which you co-founded in 2014. And against the backdrop of doing this new deal with Intercontinental Exchange, it's worth laying out in as much detail as you feel comfortable, sharing with our listeners exactly what Blockstream does. So Blockstream is a Bitcoin and cryptocurrency and blockchain infrastructure company. So we build various pieces of infrastructure that other companies use. And we also have some retail offerings as well. So um, other than the price feed with the intercontinental exchange for Bitcoin and some other cryptocurrencies, we have uh, the Liquid Network, which is a blockchain for inter-Bitcoin uh, exchange settlement to improve liquidity in the Bitcoin market. Um, we also do work with uh, Lightning, the new sort of faster and more scalable layer for Bitcoin. And we have a uh, Bitcoin wallet called Green Address that we touched on earlier, uh, which is used by a number of users. Um, and uh, we have a Bitcoin satellite network, which is broadcasting Bitcoin transaction data down from satellites, um, which is pretty cool. We're, we're having this conference today at the New York Stock Exchange on cryptocurrencies and bringing more transparency to them. If we were having this conference in five years, what do you think we'd be talking about? I guess, you know, we'll, we'll see. But at the speed things go, five years is a really long time. So, uh, I mean, I would expect uh, ETFs. Um, another thing that seems to be changing is the institutional interest from funds to 
have a way to buy Bitcoin. Another, another aspect that's in development at the moment is custody solutions. Um, because it's a, you know, even though it's digital, it's, it's a bearer asset. So you do have to have strong and secure custody. So we expect to see those developed and in play. As you, as you and your colleagues at Blockstream focus on some of the things that aren't necessarily five years down the road, but six months or one year down the road, what makes you most excited? Um, well, I mean, the pace of change is, is pretty exciting. So it's, uh, it's a bit of a fire hose keeping up with the cryptocurrency space. Um, uh, we're, we're pretty interested to see what we can do with the liquid exchange network that we're doing with some of the exchange, same exchange partners that are part of the data feed. And uh, one of the things we want to get to there is to be able to facilitate trustless exchange and get higher liquidity. So today, Bitcoin exchanges operate in a similar way to a conventional exchange, which is the participants uh, make their wire transfers to the exchange. and uh, in terms of the cryptocurrency, they deposit the actual coins on the exchange. So there are, with the blockchain smart contracting, so the kind of small programming language that can attach to assets on the blockchain, it's actually technically possible to do what, what we describe as trustless exchange. So to put a limit order on an exchange without giving the exchange custody of the assets. So that's pretty interesting because to date, now that's improving with more experienced players in the market. There have been historically issues where the exchange has lost custody of the coins. And so it's attractive to institutional investors that they can keep custody of their own assets and yet still be able to trade on the exchange. So we're interested to bring that to, to the market. And I think it demonstrates some of the value of uh, blockchain versus conventional financial technology. So it should really be used to, to its full advantage. Adam Back, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Inside the Ice House. Thank you. That's our conversation for this week. Our guest was Dr. Adam Back, co-founder and CEO of Blockstream and inventor of Hashcash. If you like what you heard, please rate us on iTunes so other folks know where to find us. And if you've got a comment or a question you'd like one of our experts to tackle in a future show, email us at icehouse at theice.com or tweet at us at NYSE. Our show is produced by Pete Ash and Ian Wolf with production assistance from Ken Abel and Stephen Portner. I'm Josh King, signing off from the Library of the New York Stock Exchange. Thanks for listening. Talk to you next week. Information contained in this podcast was obtained in part from publicly available sources and not independently verified. Neither ICE nor its affiliates make any representations or warranties express or implied as to the accuracy or completeness of this information and do not sponsor, approve, or endorse any of the content herein, all of which is presented solely for informational and educational purposes. Nothing herein constitutes an offer to sell or a solicitation of an offer to buy any security or recommendation of any security or trading practice.